So how do investors cash in? Joining us this morning is uh, Foundation Capital General Partner Paul Holland. It is worth noting that Foundation was one of Netflix's earliest backers. Paul, it's good to have you back. Good morning. Thank you, Carl. It's always great to be on with you. Uh, in, in light of Cohen's comments, I mean, we all know where he's coming from. Do you see it as a fair fight? And for how long does Netflix have that supposed advantage? Well, I think Netflix is a classic first mover advantage. Uh, you know, they really came up with this. We invested way back in 1999. Uh, they've had this strategy for a very long time, uh, and they're executing on it very well. In fact, over the weekend, I, I, I spoke to some senior executives there, and uh, you know, we're talking about the concept of your new show, of this concept around binge. And uh, the comment I got back was, binge is kind of like a code word for on demand. So if you think about it. You know, we've got Uber now for transportation. You've got Airbnb and Home Suite for lodging and for housing. Uh, you've got Netflix for on-demand content. And that's really what this generation of consumers is, what, is going to want to consume and how they want to be able to bring the information down. You know, uh, Paul, I guess the question now for investors uh, looking at Netflix at this stage is whether Netflix has proven that exact concept that you just said. I know everybody else can kind of crowd in and, and try to steal, I guess, eyeball hours from Netflix, at least potentially. So uh, can Netflix just be satisfied as being, you know, the first choice among many, if that's what it's going to be? Yeah, the management of Netflix is anything but satisfied. Uh, this is, um, you know, just a collection of ninjas, really, that are running that company. And I think you're going to expect to see some great things coming out of them going forward, just as you've seen over the last 15 years or so. You know, we've taken this concept very deep. My, con my partner, uh, Ashu Garg, has actually written a white paper uh, uh, called The Sixth Key of the Decade of the CMO. And the title is called the, uh, This Revolution Will Not Be Televised. It Will Be Streamed snapped and, uh, and, uh, and viewed on virtual reality. So I think we're entering kind of a new era here. There are going to be a lots of new opportunities for venture-funded startups, and we're already beginning to see some of those cash in in the markets. Paul, obviously the cash hoards that Amazon and Netflix have is one thing they have in common, but at Code last week, Jeff Bezos said, when we win a Golden Globe, we sell more shoes. How different is Amazon as a competitor because of their business makeup? Well, I think uh, anyone is going to be respectful of Amazon as a competitor coming into this space or any other space. It's a, space. It's a very uh, you know, ferocious group of, 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 of managers there and the way they kind of attack the market. Um, I think we're beginning to see a munging of a bunch of different things come together. If you read Mary Meeker's report, uh, uh, her annual internet report, you know, she talked about the fact that so many things now are showing up in content and then those, that content's then ending up on places like Pinterest and others where people are then making purchase decisions around it. A lot of these things are linked. You know, we have a number of uh, investments we've made along these lines as others have done. Companies like TubeMogul that are helping monetize video advertising, Localytics which is helping to uh, monetize mobile and so forth. And I think we're beginning to see, you know, you mentioned the Wild West, the conversation from Andy Cohen around content. We're seeing a new gold rush open up now around the infrastructure associated with this next generation of content and consumption. We were just talking about disruptors disrupting other disruptors. Is there a player that if they made a real commitment to content could steal a lot of Netflix's lunch? Yeah, I think there are, there are a number of very small companies that are out there today that are working on variations of, of Netflix's innovation and over-the-top programming. Uh, I don't see any of them that have a, 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 a chance at this point to be able to make a significant dent in their business. Uh, it's not something that I think, uh, at least that we worry about uh, uh, so much. They really have that very, very strong dominant position that's out in the marketplace. I think if you want to think about that, you might want to think a little bit differently, a little bit more orthogonally. You know, this whole notion of Generation Z consumers, as you know, I have three teenage girls at home. And so this notion that we used to live with of like the second screen, the second screen is really outmoded now. What we're seeing now is not just the second screen. We're seeing the first screen might be linear TV. Then the second screen might be Netflix. Then the third screen might be a social network like Facebook or Instagram. The fourth screen might be a messaging app like a Kik or a, or a Snapchat or others. And I think that what we're seeing now is that things like messaging apps are beginning to overtake some of the social networks and some of the content networks as ways for this next generation of consumers, middle school kids, high school age kids, to absorb content and news. That was terrifying what you just said. I mean, because there's no real way to um, 
historically go back and regress how these consumers are going to evolve, uh, right? Because the tools, that, the, the building blocks that they're starting with, we've, we've never seen before. But it's perfect, Carl. Think about it. Like, we love this kind of thing. What do we need to do now? We need to figure out how to monetize this. We need to figure out how to, how to measure the target audience. We need to figure out how to segment. These are all the things that are happening under the covers right now. And I think when you see this combination of what's happening around mobile, around social, um, and around this next generation of consumers, I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. The way that we absorbed, or certainly that I absorb content, is fundamentally different than what we're beginning to see now with this next generation of people that are coming through. All those people are going to need new companies formed around their styles of consumption. And these are some of the things that we've tried to cover on the Foundation Capital website with this uh, collection of, of white papers around how this explosion of content, how this, uh, you know, the revolution will not be televised, how all these other things are going to come into play. And I think it's a very, very exciting time. I think for investors, uh, you got to bone up in this area. You've really got to read up. You can't just simply look at the old, uh, the old favorites. There are going to be a lot of new, exciting companies coming down the pike. Yeah, as uh, old Blockbuster executives can attest. Paul, uh, really yes. appreciate you adding some insight.